Welcome to Billy Ho Sports. Thank you for tuning in. Please remember to subscribe to the channel and don't forget to like and comment on the videos. I hope you enjoy the show. Now, let's go! Hello, Billy Ho here again. DraftKings Week 3, tight ends, best plays, low key, all that good stuff. Uh, welcome to Billy Ho Sports. If you're new to the channel, uh, please uh, give me a subscribe. Hit that subscribe button. I much appreciate it. It uh, doesn't cost you a dime, but it has uh, much value to me. So, I am a, a very experienced uh, DFS player in both NFL and PGA. I can, I currently started in PGA earlier this year, but I've moved into NFL. And uh, I'm doing pretty good so far at pointing out. I'm trying not to go overboard with, with too much information and just giving some narratives and just some general thoughts on things. So hopefully that uh, will steer you toward certain picks. Like if you've got – 15 tight ends. I'm going to give you six or seven. Maybe it narrows your pool down a little bit. And I, I, I'm not going to guarantee anything, but I feel confident that at least three of, say, the eight tight ends are going to hit that I mentioned. So if you just get them right, then then you're uh, smooth sailing. And, and I, that's a conservative thought. Because some of these guys I'll mention, uh, I, I feel real good about this week. So, uh, and you don't have to pay all the way up. So, we're going to talk about that right now. Let's take a look at the screen. All right. Looking at the big board. So, uh, just real quick injuries. Uh, Dalton Schultz I, is doubtful for Dallas, but he's not on the main. He's Monday night. So, don't worry about that. Uh and I don't think San Francisco's on the main slate either, actually. I was going to say Kittle uh, may play, but never mind. We're only worried about main slate, 1 o'clock, 4 o'clock Sunday. Let's go. All right. Now, if you want to pay up for these guys, Waller, Andrews, or Kelsey, I am fine with it. Any one of them can break off two touchdowns and 100 yards. So uh, you're good there. Uh, the obvious guy would be the cheapest dude at Waller at 5,800. So, uh, but he'll probably be the most owned. Kyle Pitts is still in the show me mode. I don't know how they're using him, but he's not getting targeted and he's not getting any yards. He's not getting open. So they must be doing the same old dumb shit they were doing last year, splitting him wide and playing him in the slot. And he's going up against cornerbacks and he can't get free. He obviously can't get open. So uh, I, they maybe maybe they want to try to put him on a linebacker. Maybe that'll help. But I digress. Pitts is out. Goddard is definitely in play, 4,700. But uh, there's another guy in that same game that's significantly cheaper. We'll get to it in a minute. So Goddard, he's due for a touchdown, I think. He hasn't scored yet. And he should still see his typical five to eight targets. So I like that about him. Uh, the next guy at 4,600, Zach Ertz, he's getting a lot of targets too. Uh, he got he didn't get much involved in the offense, but I think he was a little dinged up that first week. Uh, I don't remember what the injury was, but he was questionable for that game. So he might even been uh, limited in the old snap count department. But, of course, he got a whopping 11 targets, caught eight for 75. We'll take that all day for a $4,600 tight end. He squeaks in the end zone once and you are uh, dancing. So Ertz is a good play. He'll probably be popular because he would be a very logical run back in a Stafford Cup stack. Then you run it back with Ertz. So keep an eye on that. But then, then again, you might want to stack Higby with Stafford. Him at 4,500. He's getting a ton of targets. Back-to-back -back games, he's got an average of 10. Uh, he's yet to score, so he might be due. Good cash. Both of those guys are good cash plays. Uh, nothing wrong with either one of them. And you can run right back down to Gerald Everett again, especially if if Allen is out 
even if Allen plays, I still think he's in play, but even more so if if uh, he's out. So keep an eye on Allen's status. And then they also mentioned, uh, and he'll be way down here, Donald Parnum. Uh, but I don't know that he's going to affect that much. Parnum is day-to-day. He's yet to suit up this season. So even, even double-click if he's out because that will just give uh, Everett more snaps. So I like all those guys. That mid-4K range seems to be a sweet spot for target hogs and, and uh, upside plays as well. So if you don't want to pay up for tight end, you got those four guys in Goddard, Ertz, Higby, and Everett to mix and match. So rotate them around your lineups. I think you're uh, you're probably in good shape. Uh, so the the next guy on the list I want to mention. Um, I'm not going in price order because well I'll, I'll go in price order. Uh, Conklin, if especially if CJ Uzoma is out again, Conklin is getting the he's tied for the most targets on the team. Uh, nine and seven. He's got the most targets on the team as the tight end, and he's got double digit points in both. That's good for uh, almost three X. That's fine. Uh, he can get in the end zone. He's a red zone target. So he did catch his one. Actually, that was his only red zone target, and he caught it for a touchdown. So he may still get there for you. Bob Tanyan, I, I don't know about him. Uh, honestly, I have not kept up with him. And that's probably why, because he's got seven targets in two games. Aaron Rodgers is not very good at Tampa Bay. Ingram showed signs of life last week. But I'm going down here to my dude, Logan Thomas, once again. Uh, another week healthier, FYI. And only five targets, but he turned them into 12.7 points. I think that game against Detroit was a little too fast-paced, and they were chasing points too much pushing the ball down the field. Uh, Thomas might have had more blocking duties, maybe. I don't know. But I still think uh, five targets is not bad for a tight end, but I would really like to see him closer to eight because he doesn't seem to be a big di- – I mean, he's. I don't know that he's going to get you the 100-yard bonus. But he is a good, safe cash play at 3,500. Uh, the next guy I wanted to mention is another good cash play. Hooper, I, I love Hooper, but uh, that just he's just not getting it done yet. Irv Smith was the guy. He had eight targets in that Monday night game. The thumb might be a little healthier. Uh, he caught a touchdown, so he's always got TD upside at the goal line. He's very, very athletic. So uh, he's probably a good play at 3,100 to be a part of that uh, Detroit-Minnesota stack. So I like that. And I think that's where I'm going to shut it off because I don't like anybody below 3,000, not unless injuries crop up and it reveals value down there because punting tight end is not something that you have to do anymore. I'll say that again. You don't have to punt tight end anymore, even in cash, because there's so many uh, lower priced good upside wide receivers that you could pair with maybe a pay one pay up and one pay down running back and a mid priced quarterback. You could punt defense if you want, but you can fit lineups with $3,500 tight ends, $4,700 tight ends. And I say you play that upside game because they could get you 20 and that's where you'll get paid off. So I hope you love this video. Uh, at least liked it. <laughs> I loved it. I thought I did a great job. <laughs> but anyway, thanks for watching. I appreciate you all. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button. Billy Ho Sports. Follow me on Twitter. B I L L Y A H 40. Billy 40 on Twitter. I usually post mostly on the weekends, Sundays, and whatnot. I got some good takes and some bad takes. And I generally have fun with it. I don't give anybody too much crap. So until the next video, see you soon. Thanks for watching.